Um, so, John, I mean, the big story today, of course, is this uh, beating crime initiative. Some people have said, oh, you know, it sounds good, great headlines. A lot of people say, well, it's a lot of hot air. It's sort of window dressing to try and sort of get the thumbs up from the public to look like he's being tough on crime. But it's not going to do anything about the problem. There's a big argument as well going on between the police and Pretty Patel. Indeed. Um, yeah, no, I think it's, it's Boris Johnson and uh, Pretty Patel practicing defensive politics because they've they noticed that Keir Starmer um, and uh, Nick Thomas Simmons uh, are underrated shadow home secretary have actually been making the running recently on on crime accusing the government of being soft on crime uh, and so they thought they better better step in and do something about that and that of course means a lot of em empty slogans and hot air uh, and and photo opportunities with police officers and 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 some rather cute dogs I noticed today <laughs> yeah can you do you know why they're calling this a beating crime plan and not a, a fighting often it's fighting crime not beating crime and I was just wondering if there was if we should read anything into that or have they literally just thought we're just going to change it for the sake of it <laughs> it's it's so... me that all day yeah what's the difference between <laughs> beating crime it. and fighting it's crime such a rubbish title but beating crime, I think it sort of sounds like the beating heart of something. But yeah. no, it's beating crime. It's 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 your ing words, which is which is what bureaucrats put on do on the front of documents yeah. all the time. And it's completely forgettable. I had to write about it today and I couldn't remember what it was called. I'm amazed it's a two-word slogan. Where's the third word? Come <laughs> yeah, on. Beating crime yeah. again. No, beating crime is it beating, again. <laughs> beating back crime. Beating back crime. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Yeah. But, but um, uh, for those who don't know, who, are, who don't live in the, in the Westminster bubble, the Conservatives, they tend to be, do better with the public when it comes to crime, don't they? That's, been their, that's one of their traditional areas. So for Labour, it's the NHS. For the Conservatives, it tends to be uh, policing. Um, but you feel like they're on the back foot on this. One. Yes, I do. Uh, and I think it's one of those things where once you're in government, uh, you're liable to be on the back foot because you get blamed for everything, uh, everything that goes wrong. I mean, every, you know, all, all the sort of, you know, whenever there's, there's publicity about stabbings or uh, there's antisocial behaviour, the government gets the blame. And that's always an opportunity for the opposition. Uh, I mean, the Conservatives did it to, did it to Labour in government, uh, although Tony Blair was obviously very careful to defend his reputation mm. on that, and was, was always on the lookout for uh, what he called eye-catching uh, initiatives, uh, such as marching uh, yobs to cash points yeah. to, to pay on-the-spot fines, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and now we've got Boris Johnson copying him um, yeah. with those kind of headline initiatives, like um, having a named police officer. Yeah. Uh, cleaning it, the streets as well. Yeah, yeah. Cleaning, yes, having, having, sort of having criminals. Orange jumpsuit sort of image. He, he was talking about chain gangs. Why does he feel the need Why does he feel the need to do this? Give, when you look at the poll, the polls suggest that the Conservatives currently have a healthy lead over Labour. Why does he feel well, the no, need well, to Well, actually, the, the polls generally over the past few days have been uh, have showed a bit of a narrowing of, of that gap. Nothing to do with crime, to be honest. I mean, I suspect it's to do with the the, the mishandling of, uh, of of the pandemic and, you, you know, that thing where where Boris Johnson uh, briefly wanted to wanted to go on that special pilot scheme yeah. so he wouldn't have to isolate. I mean, although that only lasted for, what was it, an hour well, and well, 30 minutes? Well, the bank's been to having yeah, to go into isolation like that, yeah. by his and chancellor, didn't he? But it? it really cut through. I think people thought, well, hang on, he was trying to pull a fast one there. Hmm. Um, and so I think that has probably undermined the government's uh, credibility a bit. But I think crime is one of those sort of bubbling under issues. I mean, it may not feature very much uh, in the headlines, but I think when you do focus groups or when you knock on doors in by-elections, all the people... Um, who, who were doing that in the, in the recent by-elections have been telling me that crime and antisocial behaviour keep coming up. Yeah. I mean, to know how bad things potentially are at the moment, we know there's about 21,000 fewer officers than there were a decade ago, but one of the policies in this initiative is to have a police officer go to, the, to every single burglary. When I read that, I thought, are they not turning up? When people are <laughs> saying, my house has been burgled, are they saying, oh, well, sorry, and putting the phone down? What is going on? Well, it is true. I mean, I think that's a very common complaint, is that you can't actually, you can't actually get through to to um, to the police station mm. uh, you don 't often have a police officer come round if you if you are a victim of a crime they 'll just say oh well you know we 've logged it um, and um, you know that 's the last you you 'll hear of it and so you know this is a sort of populist uh, sort of one line uh, policy isn 't it that you 'll have a have a named police officer who you can contact to find out what 's happened to that case um, if that works then that's that 's fine that might be a bit of progress but it 's hardly going to 
you know, revolutionise things. Yeah. Are you talking about... So you're saying this is a bit of a defensive approach from the government um, and that uh, it kind of wants to come be on the front foot when it comes to crime. And today we were reading that Linton Crosby, the, the, the Conservative oh, election guru as well, we were wondering why he's been yeah. spotted at number 10. Should we read anything into that, maybe? Or is that it's just pure coincidence? I, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, there are mm. reports that he apparently was going into number 10. We're just wondering... what. Well, that is an entirely sensible thing for, for, for Boris Johnson to do, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, Linton Crosby is, is a very clever... Uh, political operator, and uh, Boris Johnson wants to take advice from as wide a circle as possible. Now that he's lost his chief uh, chief advisor, Dominic Cummings, um, he's trying to fill that uh, mm. fill that gap. I imagine. Yeah. Now you have your ear to the ground, and I love a bit of Westminster <laughs> gossip. <laughs> oh, it's the gossip that I live for. Political <laughs> gossip is my jam. Is it happy families around the cabinet table? Um. Is it happy families? No, politics is never, you know, never happy families, is it? There's no friendship at the top. Um, it, there's always a bit of jostling for advantage and, and position. Although, you know, I think a lot of ministers say that since Dominic Cummings went um, six plus months ago, uh, things have been, things have settled down. Things have mm. become a lot more co collegiate and cooperative and people have been able to sort of get on with the business of government a lot better. Because Dominic Cummings was certainly... I mean, his, uh, his way of operating was just to destroy everything. Yeah. Uh, to move fast and break things is yeah. the sort of slogan that he, he rather liked. And ironically, he, he wanted... Yeah, uh, yeah, ironically, he wanted government to work better, and actually now he's left. <laughs> yeah. Talking to you, <laughs> the government working. is working better. Yeah. yeah, but, I mean, he would say, um, yeah, it was working better because everybody's just sort of agreeing with everybody else and nobody's really challenging yeah. uh, people's assumptions and that it's much better to, to, to have a bit of uh, grit in the oyster. How... how uh, problematic are these Cummings revelations, the, the Dom bombs, you know, his big sit-down with Laura Kunzberg. I mean, I don't think the public seem to care, but is it sort of winding people up on the inside? Oh, I think the public do care. The public absolutely hate Dominic Cummings because of what he did mm. uh, during the lockdown last year when he went mm. off, to, off to Durham. I think people thought that was absolutely hypocritical uh, and that Boris Johnson should have sacked him then. Mm. Uh, and so they're not particularly... He's not a particularly credible witness. Mm. But I find his revelations absolutely fascinating because, mm. I mean, here is someone who worked extremely closely with the Prime Minister until, you know, only a few months ago, giving us chapter and verse and WhatsApp messages Do these people from not the sign some sort of non-disclosure well, agreements well, and things that you'd they, think so if you're working the in the highest office in the land? Yeah, exactly. So how is he getting away with it? It's extraordinary uh, because, uh, because nobody wants to enforce the Official Secrets Act because I think that would draw more attention to it, give him more publicity. Mm. Uh, and I imagine Boris Johnson just wants to move on. What's your reaction as well to, I mean, I think it's been sort of rescinded now, but the proposal that journalists like you, if you uh, had a good whistleblower or got hold of a really great leak and didn't want to disclose your source, could end up in the clink. I mean, that was a pretty dramatic proposal, I think, for anyone in the media industry to read about. Yes, it, but it never actually made it as far as being a formal proposal mm. of, of government. I mean, we, were, we read about it in the form of leaks. Mm. Uh, which I imagine were designed to kill it to off. Stop it, and, yeah. uh, I, I, I should hope that's uh, that's precisely what's happened. Now we've spoken about the Conservative Party. I mean, my feeling is I think Number Ten's having a little look at Number Nine, going. Mm. It's a bit keen. Uh, but what about the Labour Party? My view is, you know, it, it seems like we're going to have right-wing hegemony for <laughs> decades to come, unless the Labour Party can really sort themselves out. And I wonder, actually, if the party should just schism. I mean, Starmer's starting to throw out a lot of the old momentum types now. There's this big battle for the new union boss. And, um, you know, what sort of direction of travel is, is Labour going to go down now? Can they actually sort of coordinate, get back together, concretise and become a, an election-winning machine again? Well, very interesting question. I mean, I think there's, there, there's a lot of uh, sign that the Labour Party is making progress and pull it, uh, get, getting its act together. Uh, I think Keir Starmer has done a remarkable job over the, over the 18 months he's been leader. Um, it, you know, it hasn't paid full dividends yet, although you've got to remember at the end of last year, Boris Johnson was, was pretty unpopular and Labour, Labour was sort of pulling uh, neck and neck with the Conservatives in the opinion polls. So, you know, I think Keir Starmer's achieved two very important things. He's, dis he's distanced himself from Jeremy Corbyn, who was very unpopular by the time he went, uh, and he is regarded by the British public as a possible prime minister, a credible prime minister. People can imagine him uh, in number 10 uh, running things. And in, enough people, confident. enough of the British well, public? Well, obviously not yeah. enough yet, but, yeah. uh, you know, he's, he's got a base 
to work from. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's a... That's a good position for the Labour Party to be in, considering how badly it did at the last yeah, election. Yeah, because do, do you think he connects with the British people? Say what you like about Boris Not Johnson. Much. He connects near. Yeah, that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Like, with, with Boris Johnson, right, irrespective of his policies, whatever you think about him, he connects with people. Well, he connects with an awful lot of people who absolutely hate his guts. I mean, all the sort of middle-class Remainers in London. Mm. I think Boris Johnson's... The it's funny. The two parties have beat. almost swapped their demographs, haven't they? You well, know, it's very much the Conservatives of today seems like the party of the north, the party of the working classes, the old Labour vote, Absolutely. and the Labour the, the, the Labour vote is now found in mm. what would have been Tory stronghold. Oh, it's extraordinary. I mean, it's what I call the great class inversion. I mean, you <laughs> actually have... I mean, the Conservative Party is, is more the party of the working class than the Labour Party is now. Um, it's ab absolutely extraordinary if you look at uh, yeah. look at all the uh, at all the polling evidence. It's what's Bre it's, I mean, Brexit has done this to to, mm. to our politics. But what is extraordinary is that Boris Johnson, Boris, you know, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Eton and, uh, and and Oxford, is uh, is is a working class hero mm. Mm. Uh, as far as uh, many voters are concerned. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, you know, Keir Starmer. Is, is the sort of person the middle class is rather like. Mm, yeah. People don't care about class, then. That's what that says to well, me. Well, they don't. People yeah. just care about, about someone who's likeable. That's all that matters. Likeable and someone that they can have confidence in to be Prime Minister. Well, and I think bre the Brexit divisions, I think people regard themselves as Remainers and Leavers uh, as much as they do Labour and Conservative. Mm. And I think that's really turned politics upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Can we still use those labels? Remainers and Leavers, still? Oh, I think so. I think a lot so. of people... You know, I think that went really deep, and I think yeah. it, it's it's still there. I yeah. think you know, if you look at the polling evidence, people who who voted Leave have a very very different view of Boris Johnson from yeah. from people who yeah. Voted just feels like, will there ever be a time that we can just leave it behind? Never. You know what Brexit I mean? Well, it's, life. Bre you know, get Brexit done, <laughs> then we move on. Well, I think one of Boris Johnson's um, aims in politics is to keep the Brexit issue alive. I mean, that's what all this um, this battling with the EU. Over uh, over the Northern Ireland Protocol is is, is about. I suspect. I mean, yeah. obviously, obviously, it's about real issues mm. about sausages to to Northern Ireland but, supermarkets. But I think it also has the added benefit of keeping the Brexit yeah. issue for, in the forefront. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live twenty four hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.